What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. And today I wanna to talk about something that really got me started um, color grading. And that was how to create color separation. When we think about Transformers, Fight Club and all these epic movies that look beautiful, the thing that really stand out is that there is tons and tons of color separation and it's sitting right on that cusp before it breaks. So how do you do that effectively? How do you do it in a way where you're working on these gigs where there's limited time and you have to create that impeccable look? You're gonna be learning that in this video. These are the same techniques that I pretty much use to build my look DNA when I'm working on commercials and music videos. So get super excited about that. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR? In addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflows. Learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights. Secrets to building an HDR ready note tree. Prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix. Pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, follow me on Instagram, and let's roll the intro. I'm really excited to be sharing these techniques because you have not seen them in this order. So get super excited. This footage is from Panasonic GH5S. So all the people out there that are always like, you're working with Reds and Alexas, can you work with something that's more consumer friendly? This is what we got here, okay? So the way I'm gonna create the separation is gonna be built on four separate nodes, but then I'm gonna create two more nodes. And in this example, we're gonna be using the color space transform to just convert the footage to Rec. 709. So I'm gonna hit P for Panasonic V gamut and already the colors are coming in and then I'm gonna hit Panasonic V log and boom, all of a sudden you're probably like, dude, what do you have to do? Uh, you should just print it, we're good to go, all right? But as always, this is just the beginning. So I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna come in here and the contrast is really pushed, right? Like it's a bit much. So I'm gonna go for a cool like film look with lifted, shadows so let's just raise it up like to something around here and then let's bring the highlights down so like i want a really gentle roll offs something like that and then do we want to do anything with it so like we can obviously kind of bring that down you know just to kind of create this kind of look already it looks so much more film like compared to what we had before and then let's just take the highlights and see if we want to do anything there so maybe just a little bit, not too much. But like this to me is just looking so much better than this jarring image that we get from our Panasonic. Even in the highlights, like look at that, right? Over here, over here, it's looking way softer and something that you might even get from say Alexa or Red when you apply the Rec. 709, which is not gonna be this pushed, okay? So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around here for now. And now let's start with our steps. So the first one is going to be temp and tint. So that's our first step. I'm gonna spell it correctly right here. So let's go in there. And basically the objective is simple. Look at your vector scope. We want to add more colors than like this one quadrant that we're living in, which is like warm tones right here and then pure blacks. So we wanna separate, create some separation, especially in this area right here. Now, I purposely didn't pick a shot that's lit with multiple different color temperature lights and stuff like that because that's not as difficult as like something like that, which is just shot in nature. How can we create color separation here? So what I would do is I will start with my color temp and start turning it around and see what's happening. And you can even see it in the vector scope, how we're creating the separation. Now, if you were going for a really nice monotone look, you can even do something like that. And then just if I do before and after, so beautiful, you can print it. Like it looks so natural, looks gorgeous. You can just print it, it's great. But here, we're talking about color separation. So in that case, I'm gonna keep twisting it until I create the most amount of separation between my cool tones and warm tones without losing my warm tones too much. So even something like that, it's a fine line between how many blues we are getting in here and then the warm tones are still there for me to pick at and then you know go off of that. So 
as of now, this is pretty nice. So see, before barely any blue, now we get to see a lot of blue. We see some purplish action going on behind her, and then we see our warm tones here too. They're not as nice as this, but we're, we'll get there, okay? So the whole idea is to create color separation. Now what I wanna do is uh, let's take our tint and move it around and see what's happening with our tint. So look at in the vector scope, how if I do before and after on this node, like before we were living in this quadrant and now we're opening up our image and we're actually going in the complementary color scheme, right? So that's the whole idea, right? So I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. And now if we look at it, I mean, just look at the tones now, right? Warm tones, blues, right? The separation in the water, so much more. Before, like it was just like a one big tint. So this is where I'm gonna leave my temp and tint. It did its job. It's pretty good. Let's leave it there. This one is gonna be called log. And now I'm gonna go under my log tools. And I'm just gonna take my high range and I'm gonna crank it back a little bit, maybe somewhere around here. And now all I wanna do is maximize on my, my focus right now is in the highlights. So I'm gonna add a little bit more red and just look what's happening. I'm gonna add a bit more warmth by subtracting blue. And now I'm just going to add more magenta, something like that. Now I'm gonna take my red and crank it more. I'm gonna take my blue and crank it more. And like that's just, you know, finding that fine line and keep writing it until it doesn't look fake, everything blends in well. So if I do before and after now, look at the amount of difference we made and how natural that is. And look at what's happening on the vector scope once again, where our colors were to what we're doing. So like if I take these two and turn them on and off, look at that, we were only living here. Then now we just have so much more separation. Here we thought we had already made so much uh, change in the temp and tint, but look at this now, okay? Now I'm gonna go under my midtone and see what kind of room I have to play with in there. So here is where I start creating a lot of separation. So just look at this, what I'm doing right now. So obviously I don't wanna make it too fake. So I wanna find a happy medium. So even something like that is pretty good. Now I'm gonna go under, like, where do we wanna go? We wanna keep, we want to keep it looking realistic and I want to make sure that we don't have weird colors introduced in this area. So you have to be careful about that. And now let's see. So this kind of looks nice, right? If I do before and after, just look at the color separation that we created. And once again, just look at it like the complementary colors that we're adding into our image, just using our log wheels. Now I'm going to go under my shadows in my log wheels and see what we can do there. So now my focus is on the water. I wanna separate that, right? But I don't want it to just look fake like teal, but I do want to separate it. So I'm gonna do, like I'm really focusing right here right now, right? It, it kind of looks like an old school postcard right now. The colors that we got going on, it looks so nice. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna keep finessing it, right? So like, I'm gonna take some of that teal out. I really want to give some personality to this water. I wanna dial back on my teal that I added here. So something like that. And if I do before and after now, I mean, guys, come on. So look at the separation that we're making uh, just here, just here. Again, this is shot on Panasonic GH5S. Look at the water, the, like all these tones. Just look at the tones that we got going on. So if I just take these two and turn them on and off where we were to where we are now, just by using our log wheels, okay? It's clean. Uh, we're not pulling keys. It's not gonna break if we go to our next shot. It's a very, very clean operation. That's why I'm a huge fan of uh, really maximizing your primaries because you end up with the most even clean results. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna call it HSL. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under our curves, okay? And we're gonna go in here, and what do we want to do here right now? What I wanna do is I wanna go under my hue versus luminance. I wanna bring this down, and once I bring this down, I'll be able to punch in more color in there and have um, a, an illusion of like a way more saturated sunset, if you will. So one trick that I use is like, you can see it in here, 
the representation to what's happening with your colors, okay? So this is where all my teal tones are, right, in the image, and then this is where all my reds are. Right now I'm focusing on this area, and it's hue versus luminance, meaning if I take it up, I brighten the image. If I bring it down, I, um, you know, uh, make it darker. So I'm not going to do too much since we do know that this is this is shot on P Panasonic GH5S, so we don't have too much room to play with. So I'm going to park it somewhere around here, and you see like where it tapers off. That's what I'm looking for, and I'm going to click right here, and then I'm just going to double click right here to go back to basically uh, zero or one, which is no change. So now what we ended up doing is like we're only affecting this area right here. And again, I don't want to do it too much. I just want to do it this much. And just once again, look at uh, the effect it's having. So if you look at the saturation right here on vector scope, no difference. But if you look at the image, just by bringing the intensity down, it just gives us the illusion that there is more there, which aka creates more color separation, right? And another thing that I want to do is we can go in here under hue versus saturation, right? And we can just crank this up and see what it does, right? Like not too much. We don't want to make it look fake. But even if we do something like that, once again, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to click right here, double tap on saturation to go back to zero. We're going to do the same thing here, double tap to go back to zero. And, you know, we can easily move this around and see what it's really doing. So if I park it somewhere around here, now look at the difference that we're making here. Okay, can we do the same thing here? Of course we can. So we can take this and we can crank it and see where it doesn't look fake and it all blends in. And if I just do this, and even if I'm pretty loose with it and I don't really cut anything out, although we can, because practically there is no other colors in here. So it doesn't even matter. But even if I do something like that, but usually, if I don't need to mess with it and have a really uh, broad curve, I would rather do that because it'll always give you the cleanest results. So if we look at our image now, just look at the separation we're creating, okay? And then the last step is going to be Resolve's brand new color warper. And all I want to do here is I can already see the color separation um, in this spider web, if you will. So I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to start swinging my hue to see what it's really doing. And, you know, I like it a little bit around here. It is a bit more believable. And then let's add a bit more saturation. So let's go too far and then pull it back. So if I do before and after, if we like what it's doing, we can leave it there. And obviously it is affecting quite a bit. Like look at how much more separation it's creating. And once again, we can see what's happening and then just dial it back right before it cracks. And I can keep it somewhere around here. Now we can do the same thing in here, right? So I can click right there and start messing with the hues on what's happening with my warmth right there. I take my saturation and really crank it and then just keep playing with it until I feel like, okay, this looks really, really good. And if I look at this, to be honest, um, it's looking way better. Now, this thing that you see right here that's happening to the image, like this right there, has nothing to do with the changes we're making. This is just a Resolve 17 glitch. With the future updates, you won't see that. But this right here is just a Resolve 17 glitch. Okay, I've tried it with a bunch of different techniques, and it just keeps doing that. So. Um, all I can tell you is if you use this technique properly with the color warper, you will create more separation. But obviously, with what it's doing to our image, I'm not going to be using it here. And it's not because of the tool. It's just a resolve bug. Simple as that. So I'm going to leave that off. But this is what we ended up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my nodes, turn them off, and start from what we had and what we created. So first step, drop the CST and did a proper Rec. 9 conversion and then opened up my image using custom curves and that really helped soften everything. Um, and then the first step to create the color separation was temp and tint. Just look at the vector scope, the changes that we're making. And then log was a major player. Log did quite a bit. But honestly, each step did, because when we did use this, we were like, oh my God, this is a huge step. What else can we do? 
And then this, we were like, oh my God, there's nothing more that we can do. And then finally we had HSL that really created uh, even more separation and we can see it on the vector scope. And now if somebody looking at this going, okay, this is way too saturated. I wouldn't leave my image like that. That's totally up to you. That's totally fine. You can bring that down, um, you know, if, if you want to. But the purpose of this tutorial was to show you how much color separation we can create with something that looks like this, where it just feels like there's nothing there. And then look at what we ended up with. And then if there's one last thing that I would do, because if I punch in right here, there's barely any information left here. Uh, so in that case, you can just take your low soft and just crank it until you start seeing some information. So even something like this, if I pull out and if I do before and after, it's making a pretty big difference. So this is where I'm going to leave it. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Hopefully this gives you a clear and concise game plan when it comes to creating color separation without using qualifiers and tons of windows and things like that, which is just impractical, especially in the real world. So guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Do not forget to watch the free training. Literally will just take you to the next, next level. Link is down below. I will see you guys in the next video.